designed to be a video about Excel vocabulary. The thinking is watching a video is going to be more memorable than just reading a list of vocabulary terms and trying to memorize them. So when you open up Excel, it opens up in a workbook. Uh, Excel will automatically call it workbook one. Inside each workbook, there may be multiple worksheets. You can add worksheets down here and they can be independent or they can link to themselves or you can have data in one workbook linked to data in another workbook. Across the top are these lettered columns and along the side are these numbered rows. These are cells. This is cell A1, this is cell B1, this is cell C1. These lines, you see these gray lines are called uh, grid lines. And if you don't like them, you can click up here above the ribbon. This is called the ribbon. And on view, you can uncheck grid lines and they disappear. Or you can put them back in. All right, let's do a simple calculation to learn some more stuff. Let's say we have a, a, a corner supermarket and we've got 12 cases of soda in the back. Each case has 24 cans in it. We want to know how many total cans we have. So we can pick equals cell A1 times cell B1 and hit enter. Up here is the uh, formula bar that shows you what's going on. This A1 and this B1, those are operands and this plus sign, excuse me, this multiplication sign is the operator. And that tells us we have a total of 288 cans. All right, let's make the example a little more complicated. Let's say we've got two cases of uh, two different products in the back uh, room. Uh, one, we have 12 cases. The other, I have 10 cases. One product has 24 cans per case. The other has 12 cans per case. And we want to know how many total cans of soda we have. Well, first thing we we'll probably want to do is format this, this title up here, format. So we'll highlight, we'll select those cells by clicking on the mouse and holding it down. And up here in the ribbon, we'll hit bold and change that to all be that. We also notice that these things aren't wide enough. So we can use the cursor and just move those to make them wider, make the columns wider. You can also do it up here on the ribbon under format columns, format column width. Uh, but that requires you to know exactly how wide you want it to be. It's easier to just do it visually. You can also format these by centering them. You could do it that way on the ribbon, or you can also go under uh, alignment here and it'll do the same kind of thing here let's make these guys in the center so we're going to align them that way then let's do a formula we'll say total cans equals cell a2 times cell b2 and we'll hit enter and now let's format that to be in the center and this is called the fill handle down here so we can pull this down and it will copy that formula up there and it will use the reference. It will take this times this. It will remember the relationship between these two cells and copy the formula down that way. All right, let's change things up a little bit. Let's say we always know every case has 24 cans in it. So this formula doesn't have to be cell A times cell B. We can always just say, use an absolute reference. So we can say, take cell A2, multiply it times 24, which happens to be cell B2. So we'll hit dollar sign B, dollar sign two. And so when Excel copies it down using the autofill, it won't use a relative cell uh, position. It will use an absolute. It'll just keep that B2 unchanged. So if I change this number to 30, change this number to 36, none of the answers change because it's just looking at cell B2 all the way down. It never changes. That's called an absolute cell reference. So now how do we total things up? Well, we could do this. We could say equals C2 plus C3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, or we could use what's called a function. We could use equals sum, open the parentheses, and highlight the area that we want to sum. And that'll tell us how many total cans of soda we have. If that's too much work for us, there's a thing called auto sum. So we're in this cell here. We can go up here to auto sum. 
and it assumes it's a mind reader it assumes that's what we want to do it'll do a bunch of other uh, calculations for us as well like average or the maximum or the minimum in a range and you can always adjust the range but auto sum is a shortcut to a shortcut all right let's go back to the instance where each product has a different number of cans in the case and so when we click on this formula here you'll see that it's up in the formula bar it's a2 times b2 down here again we copied using the referential function of excel so it remembered that it's this times this and then this is four times four and this is a5 times a5 a5 times b5 and then we get a total down here there's also another shortcut as if all these shortcuts weren't enough called some product so instead of creating that uh column C out there we could go down here and we could go equals some product and it happens that you do this so much in Excel they know that you probably want to take this array multiply it times this array and then take a sum and that's called some product and you end up with the 912 and again you can format it any way you like there's also a data sort functions so if we want to sort this data from the most cans to the least cans, we highlight the rows and we go to data, sort. Uh, we tell it that it doesn't have headers because we didn't highlight the headers. And we say we want it sorted on column C from largest to smallest. We hit OK. And now the we have the most cans down to the least cans of each soda so that's the the data function and there's data sort and all kinds of other things you can do with data there's also something known as conditional formatting so let's say you're an MBA student and you try to plot out your uh, schedule for the next couple years and I have pull down menus here next to each of these uh, terms and you get to term three and you say hey, I think I'll take 230 uh, well, 230, you're already signed up for it here. So this spreadsheet set up with conditional formatting. If you accidentally plan to take a course a second time, the cells will format with a yellow uh, fill to highlight the fact that you've accidentally booked the same class twice. That's called conditional formatting. There's also macros in Excel. That's a recording of a series of tasks, a series of keystrokes that uh, allows you to tell Excel to do the same thing over and over again, saves you re-entering keystrokes. There's also uh, the notion of an autofill. So if you're putting in uh, product number one, product number two, product number three, instead of typing that all the way out, you can highlight those cells and use our friend here, uh, down here and grab that bar and it will automatically fill in. So Excel can kind of read your mind and see what you're trying to do. There's also a powerful thing called if statements in Excel. So if you look at this uh, cell here, I've said to Excel, if the value in C2 is greater than 180, that means I have plenty on hand. So if this statement is true, we'll do the first thing. If this statement is false, we'll do the second thing. So let's copy this down. And again, it'll use the referential relationship of those cells and so if you look down here it says if c3 is greater than 180 we have plenty on hand if c4 is greater than 180 we have plenty on hand if not we need to reorder so the if statement says if this if statement is true do the first thing if it's false do the second thing 